us. Give us your sense of wh how things are on the streets of Washington right now. Well, I think it's uh, as Laura uh, reported uh, quite well. Uh, what you saw today was action taken not by protesters, but by folks who were intent on violating law. David, as you know, in D.C., we're used to having protesters. They bring signs, they chant. From time to time, they get close to the police line, and from time to time, have to be pushed back. But never has a protester in the District of Columbia, led by a group of people encouraged by the President of the United States, actually gone through the police line and into one of our most cherished democratic institutions, the United States Capitol. Think about this. Senators and Congress people were huddled down onto the ground, ushered into tunnels with gas masks on in order to evade violence. This is America. And now is the time for us to calmly, resolutely, tell the President of the United States to demand his supporters to leave peacefully now. Now, the President of the United States actually issued a video a short time ago, as you know, saying, please go home, although he did say it was a fraudulent election, that it was a oh. landslide and people were stealing from it. It never happened before, but he said, now it's time to go home, saying, by the way, at the end of it, I love you to the people that, as you say, really are rioters. Talking about those people who are much more than protesters, uh, you're entirely right about that. Do we know, are they still in the Capitol, some of them? Well, um, you know, I'm... I'm limited uh, by my television set uh, and uh, my team that is embedded in the command center of the Metropolitan um, Police Department. And what I know from the television set and my team reports that are literally coming out every five minutes uh, is that the process of getting those folks out of the Capitol uh, is underway, but they still are on the Capitol grounds. And as to President Trump's comments, think about that. Um, what he's indicated, again, is that the cause, according to him, is a stolen election. Well, the United States Supreme Court, uh, countless other courts, have found that there was no theft of the election. Even many Republicans are telling you that there was no theft of the election. The president has criticized the United States Supreme Court. That's a conservative court. He's criticized now his vice president when we know the common denominator is the President of the United States who's acting recklessly and selfishly after his own interest and in putting people in our institutions in harm's way. This is a sad day, as Laura commented, for the United States of America. No question about that. You cannot be a citizen of this country and not be sad looking at those images. Give us a sense, though, was it entirely a surprise? I mean, it's a shock to see people breaking into the Capitol building in that way. At the same time, as you suggest, President Trump had called for demonstrations. He gave a speech about noontime, East Coast time, uh, basically saying this was an illegitimate election, the next president will be illegitimate. Was it entirely surprising that this might turn violent? Were we prepared enough, or as we should have been, in the Washington's Capitol? I think those are really fair questions that you're asking, David. Uh, was it a surprise that the protests turned violent? I don't think we can claim surprise uh, because the groups uh, that came to protest, and I'm not saying every single protester, but there were groups that came to protest who were hell-bent on violence. There are groups that came to protest who are hate groups. They don't like people of color. They don't particularly care for uh, folks who are immigrants, notwithstanding their contribution to the country, and they came, indeed, to do damage, uh, and they did. I think there's another question to be asked, and that is, we have seen these groups. We've seen them take over the Michigan Capitol, but the United States Capitol, where we have Capitol Police and other federal authorities responsible for protecting a symbol of our democracy, I would urge you to consider that that should never be incurred upon by any protesters. Protect our democracy and rule of law. That's what makes us unique. 
Give us a sense, if you can, Mr. Attorney General, of what is going on now in bringing forces together to make sure that this is brought under control and that the rioters are evicted. I understand that there's been a reaching out, not only National Guard, but also Northern Virginia police, Maryland police, maybe even as far away as Delaware. Can you give us a sense of what forces are being brought to bear on Capitol Hill and in the District of Columbia generally right now? So everything that you just recited is the same that I've heard. I can't independently you know, confirm that. I have every good reason to believe that your reporting is correct. And that is that the neighbors of the District of Columbia, we really have a pretty close-knit neighborhood, uh, Maryland, Virginia, and Delaware. Uh, these are jurisdictions that, you know, really interact and intersect uh, together. And they're coming to lend a hand because they could see the potential for chaos. And let me just say, some of the groups that are represented today they create havoc during the day. They create mass violence at night. And so I'm hopeful and prayerful that that doesn't occur, but it's really at night's fall uh, when these groups really go at it and look to hurt people, property, and symbols of our democracy. So I'm glad you raised that because as, as I calculate the time right now, we're about 50 minutes away, five oh minutes away from the curfew that Mayor Bowser's called. Do we have any indication whether that curfew will hold? As I understand it, basically, if you're not essential, you're not supposed to be in the street doing anything as of 6 p.m. Eastern time. Well, that's right. And let me let me just reiterate that. Uh, if it's if you're not an essential worker, and, and in this case, I'm talking about law enforcement, security detail, and the like, you need to be home by 6 p.m. and not be on the streets of the District of Columbia. Now, whether uh, groups that have clearly violated the law throughout the day will all of a sudden start complying with the law uh, is something that you know, I frankly doubt. Um, but I do believe that the Metropolitan Police Department and, and other law enforcement officers will seek to enforce the curfew in order to keep the peace. And my office will certainly prosecute folks who violate the curfew.